So this short video is about how do we go about getting permission to shoot on private land. Well, it's a really tricky one. Um, I, I've spoken to all of the landowners I shoot for and uh, they've given me some answers which I've compiled into uh, this short video. So um, there's some do's and don'ts on there and some useful bits I hope that people can take use of. So uh, I hope you enjoy this video. Thanks for watching. Hello and welcome back to my channel. It's a different uh, video this time. Uh, this follows on from a question that was sent to me uh, on my last video uh, and the question was how do I go about getting permission to shoot on farmers land? Well it, it, this is the hardest question for everybody. Um, you know, Everybody wants to go out and shoot uh, but in order to shoot you need to have somewhere to, to shoot from. So what I did, I went and uh, I asked all of the landowners, I think it's about six different landowners um, that, that I go and use, use their land on for different sorts of shooting. And I asked them all that question. Um, I did ask them if any of them would like to come on and be sort of interviewed face to face. But obviously, uh, it's very busy this time of year, so getting one of them to come and sit down for a an hour was, it was nigh on impossible. So uh, I just went and spoke to them and, and asked them if they'd be happy for me to take notes on what they'd said to read back to you. Um, and, and then we can perhaps sort of discuss sort of my opinion on, on the way and how I went about uh, to, to get land in the first place. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read back the, the message uh, that one farmer sent me. He sent me this at about half past 11 one night. Um, following my request to him, uh, what what would you do? What do you look for if somebody comes to, to, to you to ask uh, permission to shoot? So the reply I got back here was, we generally have to know the person who's asking and determine what sort of person they are. Well, that's, that's pretty straightforward. Um, we, we wouldn't tolerate someone who, who comes across as being a thug and who randomly wants to shoot anything from a rabbit to a robin or shoot to maim uh, and leave animals uh, in, a, in a state of distress. Uh, if that was the case, I would point blank refuse them uh, permission or, or any, any further discussion. Uh, that's pretty fair enough. Uh, he, does, he goes on, uh, I also would like to know what they would want to shoot uh, if give, given permission. This particular landowner uh, enjoys having deer on their property. In fact, his mother used to love going out and watching the deer. So I know, um, as regards my shooting there, um, rats, rabbits, squirrels, foxes uh, are all fair game. Uh, crows, you know, any 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 sort of crow, magpie, uh, uh, that sort of uh, bird are also a fair game. The pheasants I leave alone because, again, his mum used to like watching the pheasants and the deer, as I've just mentioned, are, are also out of bounds, which is fair enough. Uh, there's enough there's enough on their land for me to to keep myself busy with. Uh, and at the end at the end of the day, we're there to do a job for for the landowner. If they've got a particular problem with rats. Or, or rabbits, or uh, I know there was a problem at this particular farm with foxes, and one of the brothers was having chickens stolen uh, and killed. So that that was a that was a good good in for me. What I would say about this farm is um, this farm is in in the next village to where I was born. I was born at home, and obviously grew up um, as as young kids do, making bale camps uh, in you know in the harvest period. So I got to know. This chap, the, the chap that wrote this reply to me, his his parents, uh, and also surrounding farms, you, you get to know. So, uh, a lot of farmers will base it on their experience on, on how how they know you and, and what obviously what you've done before in the past. Um, in in my situation, that was definitely the case in, in getting that permission uh, to shoot on that land, and I've been shooting there since uh, the early eighties. You know, and, and there was a period of time when I stopped shooting, but I went back uh, and then spoke to the eldest son, who now runs runs the farm, and and he could remember me going there when he was when he was a little kid, um, so it wasn't really a problem. But the same again, same rules apply to what his his parents had, which you obviously you have to you stick to, and and you 
you um, you obviously respect what, what their wishes are. On the back of this farm, um, I, I got the, the shooting permission to shoot at what I refer to as the sheep farm, uh, predominantly because the, the shepherd at the time was renting some fields um, from, the, from the farmer. And I got to know that shepherd. In fact, he, he got his Land Rover stuck and I went down with the tractor and pulled it out for him. So that was our initial meeting there. And then that followed on with a, with a, a conversation of, of, about the land that he had. Um, and obviously with the, the oncoming lambing season and the foxes problem. Um, so that's how I got to, to, um, to shoot the permission on that land. Um, and it's normally you, you find once, once, you, once you get a foothold, shall we say, um, and get yourself known, um, it is usually a word of mouth thing. Um, that again happened to me at the start of last year's lockdown in the March. I had a phone call completely out of the blue from the next door neighbour farmer to where my shed is, uh, he'd heard that I'd, I'd done um, some really good work clearing out some foxes uh, from around where the the um, aviary was um, and where the duck pond was and, and asked me could I go and have a look to see if I could do something because he lost a couple of lambs the previous evening. Uh, so my son and I went down um, at lunchtime and this was on a, this was on a Wednesday um, last beginning of last April we went down we uh, met his wife we went she took us to the field where these lambs had been killed we had a look round. we identified a good tree to put a high seat up on I went back to the neighboring farm where my high seat was we took the seat down went back put it up on onto the the tree that we we uh, pinpointed with the farmer's wife uh, I went back there that evening and, and shot four foxes within the hour now that farmer was overjoyed, he didn't lose any more lambs um, at lamb season. Whether that was just luck, I don't know. But it's, it's, that's, that's the way it, it, you know, it, it sometimes works. You, you, shooting, there is a lot of luck involved, being in the right place at the right time. And obviously lambing, lambing season coinciding with fox cubs being born. Um, but there's obviously a need there for, for a food and, and the food supply. But going back to um, permission-wise, um, if we're talking about air rifle shooting, I think the most important thing to start with is, is to uh, do a Google search and find out if there's a local um, air rifle shooting club near you that you can go and join. I think it's very worthwhile joining, being having a membership of an affiliated and respected club. Um, go there, take part in some competitions, get your face known, Make yourself available to help and assist and, and even organise events. And, and from that, uh, you could then um, approach landowners as uh, a member of the club looking for somewhere to say, let's say, do a shoot in some woods. So you, you do, the, the, uh, they do the, the shooting competitions at different ranges throughout the woods with a mixture of different targets. That sort of thing. If you get yourself known by the landowners, um, I'm pretty sure uh, you know, it, 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 could, it could work in your favour. But what I would say, and, and my dad always used to say to me, is you only get one, one go at making a first impression. So treat it as an interview for a job, I would say. Make yourself look respectable. Go there. Do a bit of homework on uh, the farm whether, and what, what they farm there, whether it's arable, if, there, if there's livestock, if there's cattle there, there's bound sure to be a rat problem. If there's horses there, um, the last thing a horse owner wants is lots of rabbit holes. Um, because if a horse puts his foot down a rabbit hole and breaks his leg, um, that's the end of the horse and very, very expensive vet bills. So there's these sort of things that you can offer to the farmer. Um, I think the worst thing that you can possibly ever say is, can me and my mate come shooting? Because that's a, certainly, and I've spoken to a couple of the farmers this morning, um, and that's like red rag to a bull. You, you don't want to go there mob-handed. It's something you want to go. Be responsible for your own actions, your own noise, um, your own litter. Uh, if the farmer wants you, you know, don't leave a mess, make sure you shut the gates. You can deal with that. That's your problem. Um, it's down to you at the end of the day. If you're relying on your mate who's 20 feet behind you or in the next field to shut the gate and he doesn't, or if you start messing about, then you know you can you can rip up your your um, permission straight away. Don't don't go on mob-handed. 
um, act responsibly. I say, do your homework on the farm. Find out the farmer's name. Don't go in there and just say, oh, you mate, can I, is there a chance that I can come shooting? Uh, address him properly. I know this probably sounds old fashioned, but um, you know, there's nothing wrong with good manners. Uh, and if you come across politely and you know, you're respectful to the landowner, uh, I think that's that's a good good way to start. Um, uh, yeah, make, make get some sort of relationship with the man. Um, ask ask him what is it, what does he need? Is he is he get, might have a problem with crows um, being in the in the grain store or pigeons? You can offer him that, um, and also then once you've established uh, that he has needs, then yeah, make make sure that you you can um, also establish that you can help. And, and possibly uh, provide some sort of support and make yourself available to him. Um, you know, at a, at a phone call, if he has a problem, he, he can ring you. Make, make sure he, you know, or he knows that you're available to, to come out and help him. So sort of air rifle-wise, that, that's the sort of, um, what, what I would recommend is, um, you know, don't go mob-handed, make, make yourself available, present yourself in, in, as you would go and present yourself for a job interview. Um, and and I think that's if you if you do that, uh, then uh, it's probably you're probably on, you're on to a good start. But join definitely join a club. Uh, you'll get to meet people in the club. Um, you might even get to meet landowners that go shooting. Um, so uh, without a doubt, a, a club is a good way to go. And especially if you want to go from then a, from a sub twelve foot pound to an FAC air rifle. Um, again, a club membership. Uh, would, would be a very advantageous thing as regards into that. So I briefly covered um, sort of getting permission uh, from a landowner and the sort of things that they would expect from you. Uh, they would be looking from you uh, for air rifles. I would say it's probably the same, if not even more stricter, when you start looking at shotguns, uh, centre fire and rim fire rifles. Uh, a shotgun, um, definitely the first thing, well, you would, need to, you would need to have a reason in order to get a shotgun license. And normally the first reason that people will give is, I want to go clay pigeon shooting. If there's a clay pigeon ground near to you, where, where I am, we're quite fortunate, there's three or four um, within sort of 20 minutes drive from here. Uh, my son's coming up for 14. He's got his own shotgun license. He takes part in the school's challenge. In fact, his gun's better than mine, um, but he's an active shooter. In fact, what I might do at the end of this video, I might uh, put a clip on there uh, from him shooting uh, my FAC Wildcat um, with a um, ATN shot track camera. We took this film a couple of years ago, so we would have only been 12. Um, and it's at the farm where my shooting shed is when we were there shooting pigeons and crows, but it's an absolutely phenomenal shot. Um, it's, it's a bit of video I'll, I'll never get rid of, because um, uh, you, you, you certainly don't tire watching it. Uh, and, and I think he, he just showed all the characteristics of uh, a, a good marksman, uh, and he is uh, a, an outstanding shot, although don't tell him I told you that, because his head will get too big. But um, getting back to the point, shotgun, um, getting shotgun permission definitely without a doubt uh, join a club go to a, join a clay club get yourself known there take part in lots of events and without a doubt you will meet farmers um, a lot of farmers go clay shooting it's their sort of uh, relaxation thing and also for meeting their mates um, I said get yourself known there sort of take part in as many events as you can help perhaps even help organize things um, get your face known. It would be those people at the club, perhaps the owner of the club, that I would go and ask for, would they be prepared to give a reference um, for me uh, for a rim fire or a centre fire rifle? Um, obviously a, a, a high, high standing member of the community that owns a gun shop or, or a shooting ground would be looked upon by the um, the, the police are somebody that they can rely on and, and regard their word as, as gospel. So look, look to do something like that. Again, um, once you get yourself, if you can get yourself somewhere on a farm to do a bit of pigeon shooting, obviously it's a bit late in the year now, sort of April time, 
but a um, bit of pigeon shooting um, after sort of Christmas when the, the rapes are coming to through that would also be a useful thing that a farmer will look for and again a bit more pigeon shooting once the harvest has started but there's always um, rooks and, and rabbits that, that need sort of sorting out on, on the ground so again make yourself available and as I said on the air off was don't just turn up there or me and my mate want to do some shooting because it, the first thing you'll get shown is is the gate out of the yard and that'll be it you, you need to make make your do your homework again on the, the farmer uh, meet meet some of his friends you'll probably meet them at the, at the gun club but sort of make make an acquaintance rather than just turning up there and certainly don't just send a text message to him or a whatsapp message because that, that's uh, certainly a non-starter you can't beat face to face um, meeting so make yourself make yourself um, look presentable uh, and, and have in the back of your mind the answers to the questions that he's going to ask you what do you want to shoot what are you going to do with what you shoot so if you shoot rabbits yeah, we feed I feed the family we eat rabbits my friends wives eat rabbits um, so we don't just go along and shoot rabbits for, for the sake of it we've eaten even eaten squirrel um, which, which is really nice uh, my wife's gone off of that now but um, yeah so yeah, the thing there's things like pigeons you can eat uh, rabbits squirrels you, you can eat all of that uh, so there's your reason why you want to eat it you're feeding the family and you're feeding other people so there's, there's no bad thing in that uh, good healthy food um, but, uh, but I think that's sort of sums up in a nutshell as to um, you know what, why you want to go shooting what you want to do and what services you can offer the farmer I know it will probably all sound sort of you know well everybody knows that but it's it's not as easy as that um, and it's really getting yourself known once you get yourself a, a foot on the ladder shall we say and and do some work for one farmer obviously the farming community is quite small they've all got mates that have different farms and the word gets around and I say I, I've had um, two extra bits of um, land that have come by word of mouth from other farmers um, saying you know that I've done a good job and I'm reliable um, and I like to think that if someone says to me we've got problems with with a particular fox or foxes um, I, 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 I sort of pride myself on the fact that I will go there and and get it sorted out do the homework again on on the animal see where it's coming what sort of times it's coming in there and set yourself up and, and do the job there's, there's nothing better than a happy farmer in the morning if you can present him with um, a, a couple of predators that have been sort of in his chickens or, or whatever he's losing um, his lambs obviously this time of year so that that's the, you know that's really my sort of my go-to list on on getting getting um, shooting permissions um, maintaining shooting permissions obviously once you've got it you, you don't don't let your standards slip don't start messing about um, I very very rarely take people in fact I think I've taken taken one person shooting me um, ever, ever since I've been shooting other than my son that, that that shoots shoots often with me but um, spectators and helpers you you can't you can't be responsible for the noise they make you can't be responsible for making sure that they're entertained it can be a boring sport we all know that we can sit still for hours on end waiting for something to happen um, if you're not actively part of that um, process you know you sat there with the gun on your lap uh, it does get boring um, so my advice is it's it's a it's a, a lone sport go on your own be responsible for the noise you make the mess you make um, and everything else it's down to you uh, and if you start letting your standards slips there's there's no reason why the farmer's going to say well actually you, you don't need to you know somebody else is going to do that now so getting the permissions hard enough but keeping the permission can be even harder and I say you need to make yourself make yourself available if a farmer phones up this is going on can you come and help if you've got a, a night booked out to go out on the beer with your mates or something and you've got a farmer that's ringing up saying I've got a problem with a fox I know where I'd go um, I'll, I'll be down the farm because the farm's always you know it, that if you lose that you've lost it for good so um, it's a question of priorities get your priorities what you want to do um, how much do you value your sport well it's 
it's really valuable to me but then again so is home life so it's a balance there but um that's that's what i would put down as my tips um and advice i said but most most landowners that they are very cautious on letting people onto their land with uh, any type of of firearm um, so it is down to you to make sure that you can present yourself in a good way um, and if you've got some written backing that somebody will um, vouch for you then then all the better go for that but uh, so i'm going to leave you there that and i'm going to leave you with uh, this very short clip it's only a couple of minutes of a crow which was 40 yards away from where Munch, we call my son Munch because he's always eating. Um, he, he's, the, he's the lad that does the drawings at the um, start of my video. Um, so this, this crow, uh, we, we were sat with a, her with a back against the, the shed wall and the crow was 40 yards away. But there was about three trees between uh, where Munch was sat and where this crow was. And you can see the branches are all, all blowing crisscross. It was, a, it was a hell of a gale that day. Um, I could see the crow from where I was sat. Um, I'd shown Munch how to turn the camera on and I left him to it. So uh, the, the footage you're going to see is, uh, is it's his own work. He got on and did it. Um, and I said, it's, I'll, I'll, never, I'll never delete it because it's, it's just a fantastic shot. So I'll leave you with that. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope it's been useful. If you've got any, any questions, please just um, send them back to me. Um, but, you know, it's, 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 it's down to you at the end of the day um, to, to make the best of it when you, when you go and approach these people. Um, so good luck with that. Um, if, you've, if this has been useful, please like and subscribe to my channel. Um, there'll be a bit more squirrel shooting. In fact, today I've been back to uh, where the last video was shot. Uh, there's six pounds of nuts that have gone in seven days. So I think there's, there's a few more than two squirrels there. In fact, I saw two there while I was setting up. I've moved the box round because you, if you saw the video, uh, I made a reference to the fact that the box was facing southeast. So as the sun came up, I, my was looking straight into the sun. So not a good, not good for a viewer of a video um, screen. So I've turned the box now round so it's facing east. So it should be quite nice and bright if we get some decent sunshine on Sunday morning when I'm planning to go. So it's, that could be one to look forward to. But I'm back at the farm where my shed is tonight to do some rat shooting. So there's a few things going on. Um, and then in a couple of days time, I've got to go back to the sheep farm to uh, do a catch up and see if we've got any more foxes sniffing around. So it's, it's all go. Um, again, thanks again for look, uh, watching. Uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't and share it with your mates. And I look forward to seeing you on the next film. But I'll leave you now with the, uh, the, the 40 meter crow shot from my son Munch. Um, hope you enjoy it. Take care, see you on the next one. Bye bye. Yeah. What a shot. Sat on the ground with a rifle on his knee, unsupported. It was a brilliant shot. Anyway, thanks for watching this. I um, hope it's been useful. Uh, please subscribe and like and share it with your, with your buddies if, if you want to. Um, thanks very much to all the farmers for taking part in this survey. Um, I know it's difficult for you. Um, you didn't want to appear on here, but um, your, your words and advice were useful. And I hope I've been able to pass that along to everybody. See you later. Bye.